Hello! Today I'd like to show you how I make briquettes or how we make briquettes. We've been doing this for a couple of years. The equipment's a bit Heath Robinson. It's not pretty, but it works. It's only my way of doing it. It's not the way. I'm sure you clever guys out there will have a thousand ways of doing this. I'd just like to show you what we do. The most important thing, gender neutral marigolds. You can't have pink, you can't have blue, they've got to be yellow. That's the most important thing about what we're doing today. Right, so I've made myself a bit of a jig. As I say, it's Heath Robinson. We've got a steel pipe, which has got holes drilled throughout the centre of it. A hole through the bottom, that allows water to come out. That pipe in turn goes into a square block of wood and it's held in place with a couple of screws. We don't tighten things tight because we want the water to be able to escape so there's no tight about it. There's the block. Just so happens that wicks glue bottles are a perfect fit to go in that hole to stop me putting my cardboard down there inadvertently. Here's the mix in a bucket. It's cardboard with a bit of sawdust mixed in. It's munched up outside. It's pretty blooming cold here today. But the longer you leave it up to a point, the better. And we just fill that round the outside and pat it in. It's a bit like baking a cake actually, except you wouldn't really want to be eating this stuff. How much do you put in until it's full? How do you know when it's full? When you can't get any more in. There's no real science to this. I don't weigh or measure the amount of cardboard to sawdust ratio. I just use what I've got. I do take off most of the sellotape and brown sticky tape from the cardboard because the fire doesn't particularly like that. Well, you can see that. Yeah. Already the water's dribbling out the bottom and that's exactly what we want. We have a couple of blocks that go on the top. gentle squeeze in there. Hopefully you can see all this water running out the bottom. Plop that under the jig. Plop the second block on top. And a little bit of weight lifting practice. Lift the jack up. Stand it on the top. I'll turn this round now so hopefully you can see it a little bit better. Just screw the top up some. Pop that off and initially you pump it down by hand. Hopefully you can see all the water gushing out the bottom there. Great way to warm yourself up on a cold, frosty day. Okay, so we're getting a bit tight on pressure. We don't want hundreds of pressure in it. That's it. We go down to about there. Like I said, there's no exact science to it. Generally, silt it forward. You can see all the water then coming out. Undo the jack to release the pressure. Trusty little crowbar goes under the side of the jack to just raise it up a touch. The jack, jack then can slide out. Take the spacer out. Lift the jig upside down.
Remove the two screws. Use the crowbar to pry up the base with the help of a bolster chisel. With any luck in the following wind. Turn it upside down. Position it on there so we've got enough room to get it out. few gentle taps in the bottom, out pops the briquette, there we have it, perfectly formed. That then goes outside, under our carport we've got some Y mesh under the uh, wooden beams that support the carport roof, leave it out to dry, in the summer, a couple of three weeks it'll be dry, this time of year it takes considerably longer. They burn really well, thanks for watching, hope you've enjoyed it.